I'm talking about now, now all I can see is chaos and confusion and panic. So yeah, uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Joona Hoikkala and uh, I'm a member of the CertBot development uh, team. I'm going to talk to you about uh, making TLS adaption uh, trivial or uh, easy for everybody. So our mission is uh, fully encrypted web. Uh, we are quite not there yet, uh, but the adaptation rates are faster than ever currently. Uh, this shows the uh, Firefox telemetry from the last year. It doesn't look too dramatic because it's the, uh, on this scale. Uh, I don't know what happened in September, by the way, but uh, the second like uh, downslope is uh, happened exactly at 24th uh, of December. Everybody was. Uh, plugging their IoT devices in, most likely, the Christmas presents. So yeah, um, that unimpressive graph, you call that progress? Yeah, it's actually 25% growth from 40% 40, 40 to almost 50 in a year. Uh, this is how Let's Encrypt um, statistics have been developing since uh, it was released to public beta in December uh, 2015. This uh, screenshot was taken uh, January 5th, but I checked actually this morning or yesterday evening, can't remember. Uh, and there was, after this, there was uh, 400,000 more uh, FQDNs secured by a Let's Encrypt certificate since uh, January 5th. So we are above the threshold at last. Uh, so the browser vendors who are very keen to uh, get the web encrypted as well are able to push people forward. Uh, they are doing this, for example, uh, Chrome, uh, Google has, has been taking the approach that they are uh, marking the non-secure pages as non-secure. If they cu currently, uh, the Chrome 56 was released a week ago, I think. Uh, if, the, if a page contains a password input field or um, uh, credit card in inputs uh, it, and is HTTP, so unencrypted, uh, Chrome will tell the user that it's not secure. And it's uh, actually quite big uh, indicator. <coughs> Looks like this. This is, by the way, uh, taken from the European uh, subsidiary of uh, Deal Extreme. Not like you are going to handle any credit card information after that point in the workflow. <coughs> so about the TLS, the cast. We have a CA, which is a mutually trusted third party. We have the host being your server, most likely. And we have the client, which is, in the case of web, it's the browser. So the host generates a certificate, get it signed by a CA. Uh, client contacts the host and receives the certificate. Because it's signed by, a, by an uh, entity that's trusted by the client, client will trust it. So, what do we need TLS or encryption in, in the first place? I'll skip the man in the middle stuff, you know about that. Why do we need encryption in the first place? But there's, there's more, more in the web context, uh, concept. Uh, there's HTTP2, which doesn't require HTTPS per spec, but it does by uh, uh, client implementations. The browsers actually, actually do require it. Search engine op optimization and uh, some so-called powerful HTML5 features that are uh, proactively kind of uh, being pushed uh, to, to work only 
with uh, encrypted communications. There are uh, things like geolocation, uh, stream API, media capture. That means your micro uh, if, if a page wants to use your microphone or, uh, or uh, your uh, webcam or orientation data, or full screen even, it has to be HTTPS or trusted origin. So what important? Why are we not there yet? Why 50% of the requests in web are still unencrypted? Well, it's been histor historically a, a pain to actually get the certificate. Uh, you have to hope, uh, hope uh, through a lot of hoops to obtain a certificate. It used to be pretty costly to get one, or 100. Uh, the process used to be manual. That's uh, yeah, that's al always labor. So it may made, uh, for example, development environment de uh, deployments, uh, staging de uh, deployments, pretty cumbersome or time taking. So people just skip the unnecessary part. <coughs> uh, because it's manual process, uh, the management overhead it causes it's it's a, a real thing. You have to keep keep track of. Uh, Certificates on your servers, so to know to, to know when when to uh, renew them. Even though the uh, money-hungry CAs are of, uh, oftentimes spamming you to do that uh, beforehand. Uh, there's all, also the configuration. Uh, it's not exactly hard, but more on that. Uh, this configuration, for example, is what CertBot installs or includes in your Apache configuration. It's something that I don't know, but uh, remember by heart. <laughs> if I set up a new server, I definitely won't be like uh, typing this in. Um, <coughs> and yeah, is it hard? Well, uh, not exactly, because we have a small and controlled client pool, like the web. The browsers, like a thousand and one browsers, having a thousand and one versions of them that you have to support, uh, it's a pain. So, why is it hard? Uh, you can search for uh, uh, configuration examples, tutorials, whatever, uh, Apache to uh, HTTPS configuration, how to. And you end up with a tutorial or a Stack Overflow article from 2010. It's good for pretty much nothing. And uh, it's an ongoing process, because you can't just like uh, leave configuration lying there and trust it to be good in a year, in two years, whenever you're, you're supposed to like redeploy deploy the whole infrastructure. So. We have a solution for these things. Um, CA, let's encrypt, automate it, eliminates the human problem. Uh, clients, certainly certain isn't the only, one, only client out there, uh, <coughs> but uh, client that will configure or handle your TLS configuration, for example. They're communicating using the ACME protocol, which is short for uh, um, automated certificate management environment. A pretty simple pr protocol at it as well. But yeah, about these actors, um, <coughs> let's encrypt. It uh, uh, gives you gives out uh, uh, short-lived certificates only for 90 days. Um, this is mostly well, the most important factor in this, in my opinion, is is that. Uh, the revocation process currently is completely broken. Chrome has uh, over 50% market share, and uh, it blatantly ignores the whole revocation thing by uh, using CRL set, which is a set of uh, high priority revoked certificates that's provided to the uh, to the browser with uh, browser up, up, uh, updates. <coughs> so it mean, pretty much means that uh, if you're not a big player, high priority domain, most likely your revoked certificate won't end up in the Chrome uh, CRL set, which means that uh, Chrome will happily 
so show your uh, revoked certificate as valid. So let's encrypt also only provides uh, domain validated certificates, no OV, EV certificates, because they are they all require some manual labor, verification of uh, various things and so on. Uh, let's encrypt has some limits in place, but you are not going to hit the limits if you're not doing something wrong, most likely. And if you're not doing something wrong and still hit the limits, there are um, uh, exception lists, and you should uh, contact uh, ISRG to get on one. <coughs> let's encrypt uh, key principles are being free, free as beer, uh, to be automatic, secure, transparent. This is a big thing, I think. Uh, transparent as per funding, and transparent as per, for example, posting every signed certificate information on uh, certificate transparency logs. They are able to be searched by anyone. It's a good recon thing as well. Being also open and cooperative. It talks ACME protocol. It's in the uh, fourth version of IATF draft currently. Pretty much JSON over HTTPS, pretty simple as well. It has a lot of features. Uh, there are features that uh, support like a commercial use of it. There's no restrictions for uh, commercial CAs to, for, for, of using it in their process. And I really hope that, that someday they will do. So, like my challenges. Uh, pretty much like this. Uh, you have a CA that provides you a challenge. Uh, bring me a shrubbery, or uh, cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. And you just got to do it, and uh, then the Knights of Nih will sign your certificates. So, ACME challenges, uh, there are several types. Uh, for example, HTTP challenge, which requires you to place uh, uh, randomly named uh, resource to a, a predefined location on your web uh, or on your domain that CA will, able, will be able to request and verify your ownership of the domain. There's TLS SNI which requires you to craft your kind of custom self-signed certificate that the CA will, yet again, resolve your domain and uh, contact it asking for the uh, certificate and verifies your <coughs> ownership using that. Then, if you don't have uh, ports 80 or 443 open to your server, there's only also a pos possibility for a DNS challenge, which means uh, Placing a challenge string in TXT record of the kind of magic subdomain of your requested uh, domain. Okay, then there's a search bot client. It's EF, uh, EFF's uh, ACME client. Uh, it was previously called Let's Encrypt, but got renamed in last spring. It was the so-called official client previously, uh, but there's a lot of clients, so we don't want to have like a one official, but one for the whatever you use. Uh, it creates and manages the certificates, uh, certificates for you, and optionally for uh, uh, plugins that have the installer part will configure your server for you. Uh, or you can just... Uh, include the cert bot TLS configuration in your uh, HTTPD configuration and let it keep your TLS configuration up to date. So, cert bot anatomy. The plugins, they have uh, either authenticator or installer part or both. Authenticator will handle the authentication with the ACME server, installer uh, part of the plugin will uh, parse your configuration, find the virtual host you have in, uh, host you have in there, uh, and uh, suggest these for you to enable HTTPS 
on. So the plugins we currently have are uh, standalone, which if you don't have anything running in port 80 or 443, it will create a, a HTTP or HTTPS server for you and uh, provide the challenge using that. Then if you, if you do have uh, HTTP, the running on the host, you can use the WebRoot plugin, pretty much. Uh, my WebRoot lies in this file system folder. Let the search bot handle the placing of the file, Very, uh, verifying it, and uh, that's it. No configuration touched, uh, same as in stand standalone. Then there's a manual plugin, which will pr either prompt you to place this file containing this string to this loca uh, to, to your web root or uh, place this string to your DNS uh, record for the CA to verify. Uh, manual plugin also has since like a few weeks ago um, has a scriptable parts that you can just automate. I'll show you that a bit later. Then there's um, Apache and N Nginx plugins, which will parse your configuration, suggest the uh, virtual host you have in, in your configuration to you, and uh, request a certificate and configure your server for you. OK, demos. Let's see. OK, so. Yeah, sorry. Do you see it now? Bigger, still bigger? OK, I'll go with this. Um, <coughs> so we have uh, two, two virtual hosts uh, in the demo server, uh, disobey.demo.10.fi and disobey2. So to run the demo, I'll just uh, invoke the cert bot. So it uh, finds uh, the two virtual hosts I have um, configured in my Nginx and suggest, uh, suggests me to, to enable HTTPS on, on them. So I'll choose the second one, email address. And uh, accept the terms of service. Of course, I can skip all of these by uh, providing the uh, them on comment line. And then it goes its way and uh, requests the certificate, cleans up challenges, creates the CSR, obtains the certificate, installs it. And now it asks me if I want to serve HTTP unencrypted con uh, connections besides uh, the HTTPS or uh, redirect everything from uh, HTTP to HTTPS. So of course, I select two, redirect redir everything, and we should be happy campers now. Let's see. Two, let's, yeah. Secure. Uh, so, oops, we are, we are fine here. Uh, the certificate, I don't know if you can see it, back there, but uh, it should be. It should be like, uh, as per now, uh, the not before date. So that was the Nginx configuration. Of course, the uh, second subdomain, uh, disobey.demo, uh, whatever, was not enabled or certificate was not requested, so uh, it will, will most likely, or it will answer with the incorrect certificate because uh, it finds the disobey to certificate only from the host, but uh, still works with, uh, with uh, HTTP. So back to the slides. That was the Nginx slash Apache plugin. They were they worked uh, similarly. So I'm also secure now. Now, right? Chrome just told me that I'm secure. Well, yeah. 
there is, there's a lot of you can do. Uh, there's a lot of you can do as per certificate, requesting the certificate. There's a lot of you can do with uh, HTTPS configuration. I'll first go through something that I built a few months ago um, about the DNS challenges. There are some problems with uh, DNS challenges for uh, boxes that don't have uh, ports 80 or 443 open. Uh, so you need to use the DNS challenge. But the problem is uh, most DNS servers don't have an API. And if they do, they pretty much give the credentials way too much power. So enter ACME DNS. It's a simplified DNS server built in Go that has a RESTful API uh, for strictly TXT record updates. Uh, you can put like a subdelegate uh, authoritative uh, DNS server on, for example, auth.yourdomain.tld. Um, and yeah, just provide the NS records uh, to your main zone to point this and let it handle everything kind of uh, below the subdomain. Um, yeah, I won't go through the kind of uh, features. It allows you to provide a cedar mask whitelisting for, uh, uh, for, for, for the clients that are, are uh, able to pro uh, do the updates. And yeah, here's uh, no API for automation. This will handle it. Uh, don't want to expose your whole zone. This means effectively that if you're using uh, some DNS server that actually has an API for updating uh, whatever record, you most likely, what you get, if you want to automate uh, DNS challenges, you will have to leave the API credentials lying on the box. You have like a 10 boxes. Every box has your DNS credentials. One box gets popped. Oof. There goes your zone. It's a pretty bad thing, too. So luckily, the CA will follow the CNAME records. So we can set up the ACME DNS and point the CNAME records of the magic subdomains to the ACME DNS generated. Um, Subdomains. So I have one instance running uh, as a demo, but uh, of course, run your own because you're effectively what you're doing is you're authorizing, uh, authorizing the uh, entity who, 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 who runs uh, the domain that you're pointing your C name to, acts on your behalf in the verifying the certificate challenges. So, demo here as well. Oop. Okay. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do here is um, I'll first show you <coughs> how to actu actually obtain uh, ACME DNS credentials and uh, your unique sub subdomain. Just use these. Boom. There's credentials for you. Uh, you can't change the password. You can't change anything about that. If you lose your credentials, just generate the new one and uh, point your C name to the new one. And that's it. But yeah. Uh, but how does that actually work? I have created the uh, auth script that I will run with uh, certbot. It picks the uh, certbot validation uh, string provided in an uh, environment variable by a certbot client for the script, which will uh, post it to, to, to the ACME DNS API. Let me show you the script first. 
So yeah, what the script does, it just uh, loads the environment variables from uh, file. I stored, uh, stored the variables there, of course, because I had to point the C name of the uh, demo domain that I'm going to request, request the certificate for. Uh, but the kind of, yeah, it's just a shell file that has the environment variables. You can see the format there. Then it will go its way, post, uh, post and TXT record update to the Acme DNS server. And um, it works like, uh, okay, it works like, uh, let me show you. Uh, there, yeah. Uh, copy pasting because I want to eliminate the human error here. Okay, so <coughs> that's it. Uh, now, when I check the magic subdomain of my domain that I'm going to request the certificate for, check the TXT record, I should see a C name pointing to the uh, Acme DNS subdomain that contains uh, the string I just posted there, validation token received by uh, uh, received from the CA. Yep, you can see it there. Uh, that's effectively what the CA will see. So, how to actually get the certificate using this? Um, I have a ready command line here. I'm using the exact the same script, using auth.sh, that picks the uh, certbot validation string from the uh, from the environment variables provided by a certbot. What I should, yeah. There we go. Obtaining certificate. I have had the email address pre-saved to the certificate configuration. But now, because I'm not actually validating the certificate using the actual server, I could like a, literally do it from anywhere because it, it's a DNS challenge. The CA won't con contact your uh, actual host. It will ask you because the workstation IP address is the one that's going to be locked by requesting the certificate. It asks you if, if it's okay. Well, maybe this time. Then it goes its way, post the, um, post the validation token, CA will validate it. And I'm good, good to go. I should have, um, let's see if I just uh, activate the configuration here. Okay, uh, seems like the connection is starting to die on me. Well, I got the certificate anyway. Uh, I won't be able to actually now because the Wi-Fi is getting laggy. I can't uh, put it to use, but well, yeah. So where to go from here? That was uh, how to secure part of uh, the, uh, the certificate uh, signing challenge. But uh, there's a lot you can do on the server side from here. There's uh, HTTP strict transport security configuration. There's uh, HTTP public key pinning, uh, CSP, cookie options, all kinds of stuff. I won't rush through them, because if I just rushed through HPKP, it's going to result a lot of brick sides. So yeah, that's about it. Any questions? Yeah. Sorry. We need a we need a mic. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what's the situation of uh, deploying uh, the ISRG route to mobile devices, or was that the question? Hmm. I think that's uh, somewhat false. Uh, we, we have uh, we have uh, intermediate signing uh, with, uh, with uh, cross signing with uh, um, with a trusted root. That most likely is is, is that uh, the whatever host is talking with a mobile client is not actually providing the full chain. There, it sounds like a configuration error. I I haven't myself seen uh, problems with the mobile devices. Or is there? A, I, yeah, I have it. Okay, okay. Um, we have to deb. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, you could, could, could you, uh, you, you could um, contact me later, uh, and we can try to see what's the problem. Because what we want, we want to fully encrypt the web. <laughs> we have to sol solve these problems. Yeah, uh, we don't have it, but uh, you, you can use, for example, QL is uh, uh, SSL like a check tool that will provide you a list of uh, supported devices and unsupported devices with a default configuration, of course. But I don't think the certificate itself is, is like a mismatching, so to say. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, contact me. Let's solve this. <laughs> uh, more questions? Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> One more thing, by the way. I have a lightning talk. <laughs> it's more on the light side. Uh, certificate authority mishaps from the last year. Uh, the 2016 was a bad year for CS as well. The first one, Komodo, OCR or bad CR, CR. What they had in place was a verification for domains, EU, BE, AT, so on. The roots did not provide uh, who is data in uh, text form. And uh, what Komodo does is it, 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 it picks the email addresses uh, from there that they sent the verification mail to. So they, uh, they, they had the information in a, in a picture form to fight the spam bots. Well, OCR. L and 1. They're pretty close, close to each other, right? So Google is Goog1. E, it's equal uh, when reported by the OCR or the bad CR. It's not actually Google domain that got, got compromised or got uh, certificate signed for, but uh, it was uh, Al Telecom, which is the largest telecom in Austria. So this was the first. Komodo 2. Uh, trademark, let's encrypt. Komodo tried legally to reserve the let's, em let's encrypt everything. Komodo, let's encrypt. Komodo, crypt. Let's Komodo, <laughs> whatever names. They tried to reg register when they see saw let's encrypt coming, so to say. Uh, ISRG started discussing with them, trying them to get, get them to drop the uh, trademark re registrations, which they refused to do. So ISRG was forced to publish the information that uh, this, is the thing, uh, this is the situation, kind of in a way of a pre-warning that we might, might have to change the name at some point. So internet exploded. Komodo tried to kind of uh, covered their asses on their forums around the web for a week, maybe, week and a half. After that, uh, 
new information was provided that we made an, uh, made an agreement. Internet exploded. And uh, in a business that's like a pretty much it's trust, trust business, uh, maybe undermining your competitors is, is not the best strategy forward. So my favorite, Wusan and Startcom. It's a multi-fail. It's huge. Uh, so Wusan and Startcom are both currently uh, distrusted by Google Apple, pretty much everything out there, uh, because of the multi-fail. But it was not only the CA. Also, the company that was auditing their process got burned. Uh, it's a small company called <laughs> Ernst & Young, uh, <laughs> even though it's just the Hong Kong subsidiary. But anyway, they are not like, uh, allowed to do the uh, audits for the CS anymore. <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh, they had an... Mozilla had an alphabetical list of uh, these mishaps of uh, Busan, and it went all down to the X. These are my per per only my personal favorites here. Uh, you should all read the Mozilla security mailing list. It's uh, popcorn-worthy <laughs> stuff, because there's uh, all, all kinds of uh, uh, nice characters. For example, the Wu Sign CEO, who is trying to, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my favorites are any port allowed for validation. What it effectively means that you have, for example, shared host, uh, sh shared hosting but you're able to use any port for the validation, which means that uh, like a, whoever user on the system is able to open ports over 1,024, of course. So any user, user on the box could get the certificate signed for uh, every domain that points to the actual IP address. And that's kind of bad. Also, they did have uh, backdated SH SHA-1 certificates that were used because some of their like, uh, clients that had a bit of money needed them. Uh, SHA-1 certificates were not supposed to be signed anymore after uh, 1st of uh, January 2016. So they, ba they backdated it. It's a solution, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, also, additional domain validation, which was actually the case that brought the, mm, this, these whole issues to the limelight. What it meant was that uh, if you requested an SAN certificate, which is effectively certificate using an extension called subject alternative name, uh, which allows you to have multiple domains per one certificate, uh, it would validate only the first one if they are belong to the same domain. So what, I can't remember the guy's name. I should have uh, put it here. But uh, <coughs> the, the guy, uh, he actually requested a certificate for uh, user pages. GitHub Hub had user pages that were pointed to, by, to, to the domain username.github.com, username.github.io. So he requested a certificate for uh, his username.github.com and github.com. And he got certificate signed by the Busan, valid certificate that was signed for uh, github.com. Yeah. Also, they purchased Startcom, which had its, uh, its, its own problems. They also tried to re uh, like a brand uh, service that was tailing with uh, Let's Encrypt brand name. They had uh, Start Encrypt, I think. Their, but their client was super broken and uh, caused a lot of problems. It was considered like uh, insecure, <laughs> the client itself. Uh, but these are like uh, just only the personal favorites of the Wusan problems. You should look it up. It's uh, in the Mozilla wiki, all of them, and the uh, discussion 
if you have three hours of free time, read through the mailing list. It's golden. <coughs> okay, then there's uh, one from this week. Go, Daddy. They read the challenge from wherever in the response body, including 404. <laughs> Not found. Don't just go 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 out and uh, find a domain that has a web server configured to report the actual requested URI in the 404 uh, message, and you can get a, you can get a certificate signed for it. Not anymore, though. Uh, go to the, they revoked like uh, 9,000 certificates because this had been there quite a long time. But yeah, remember uh, what I talked about the revocation system today. Most of them m maybe still work. So yeah, thank you.